has really laid some things on my heart about the precious Holy Spirit. And uh, let's bow our heads now and just ask the Holy Spirit that he would bring forth the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon us. We look to you to teach us and bring this word alive to our hearts, Lord. And we trust you, we look to you to be the teacher. And Lord, you use instruments like men and women to speak, but you're the real teacher. And we want to thank you that you're going to teach us tonight just how wonderful and precious you are to each and every one of us. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First scripture I, I want to uh, turn to tonight is John 16, 8. We already had it on the board. John 16, 8. I was uh, looking at this. And uh, it just seemed like it just popped up. And when he is come, remember we talk about who he is, and we know, and when he, the Holy Spirit, is come. Now, how many of you know he's already come? <coughs> Jesus is talking here, and this has already happened. When you read that scripture, this is prophecy that's already come about. And when did it come about? 2,000 years ago. And the Holy Spirit has been on the earth for 2,000 years convicting sinners of sin. And I want you to see that now. So he's been busy for 2,000 years. Now I would say this was probably our first encounter with the Holy Spirit. We were, we were in the world. We were classified the world. You're not talking about the earth that we see. But we, the people on the earth, we were in the world and the Holy Spirit convicted us of sin. Now we've already experienced that. And yet he's convicting people today, people of the world of sin. So our first encounter probably with the Holy Spirit was when he did this. Now it could have been other times in our life that we weren't aware of, but we know that our, this was very important that we encountered him in this because he convicted us of sin and death comes after sin. Thank God he convicted us. He did his job. Aren't you glad? Amen. And, uh, and then of righteousness and of judgment, okay? And we knew that when he convicted us that we had no righteousness within ourselves to be able to come into the very presence of God, but when he convicted us of sin, and then we got, and he showed us the remedy, which was Christ down on that cross, and carrying our sin for us, and made the payment for us, we realized when that happened, we said, Lord, I believe. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you, I receive you now as my righteousness. And then we know that he convicted us also that there is a judgment, and we know there's a judgment for the Christians and there's a judgment for the lost people, which is at the end of the, of the millennium years. And so he did his work there, okay? From the very beginning, the Holy Spirit was working on us, and now he's working in us, doing what we call a sanctifying work. Now, I want you to see in the scriptures <clears throat> how precious the Holy Spirit is. He's been given to us to help us. In fact, the Bible says he's our helper. And the, the very next verse, which I want to turn to, is found in, uh, oh, that's a good one too. Got a lot of good ones here. But I want to turn to uh, John 15, 26. Okay? Let's read that. John 26. 15, 26. I'm sorry. Now, Jesus is talking. And he says, But when the Comforter, which is another name for the Holy Spirit, is come. Now, <clears throat> when he said that, he hadn't come yet. 
Now he was in the world and he worked in the Old Testament times with the people, but he didn't live in the people. He came upon them. The Holy Spirit anointed the prophets to prophesy. And when they finished prophesying, the Holy Spirit come off of them. Okay, that's the way I understand it. And yet the Holy Spirit was there with them, but not in them. But today, the Holy Spirit is in us. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, but when the Comforter is come, and now we know he has come, and we've, we have him in our hearts, whom I will send unto you from the Father. So Christ is saying, now when I'm, when I'm ascended, I will, I will send the Holy Spirit, or the Father will, send the Holy Spirit, and I want you to know that he's a spirit of truth which proceeds proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. That is, he shall testify of me. Who's he? The Holy Spirit shall testify of Jesus. Okay? Now, look at the next verse, 27. Verse 27, yeah. But you also will testify and be my witnesses. Now, Jesus is saying to his disciples and to us, we are his disciples a disciple is a disciplined one. So we are disciplined. But you also will testify, talking to his disciples, and be my witnesses. Because you have been with me from the beginning, he talks to them. But we know that the Holy Spirit has been given to us now. He lives within us and has empowered us to be a witness. And I know that a lot of people are scared to witness, but you're going to have to be brave and strong and courageous and break through that fear because I'm telling you, you're missing one of the greatest blessings in the world <coughs> if you can't go to anybody and testify what Jesus has done for you and what he's done for them. And I'm not bringing condemnation on you, but you know the fear you have. But you need to say, Lord, I need your help to break through that fear, to be a bold witness for my Savior. How many understand what I'm saying? Okay. Every teacher wants their pupil to anticipate. If we can get the church moving through that fear, which is nothing but a cloud of Doubt, okay, now I'm not going to go that way. Now, <clears throat> I want you to look at uh, 1526 again, okay, we had, yeah, 26, 1526. Now, but when the comforter, all right, number one, he's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our helper. I want us to seal that tonight, that the Holy Spirit is for me. Everybody say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. you are for me. Are for All right. Me. The Father has sent the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us to help us, to comfort us, <clears throat> to be our advocate, to, to be our intercessor, to be our strengthener, to be our standby. When he comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes, proceeds from the Father, he himself will testify regarding uh, me. Now, we got to nail that down. Don't let that just be words on that screen. I want you to see that he's your helper. Everybody say, he's my helper. He's, my helper. he's not against me. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Okay, now, that's what he says in the Word. He's not here to crush us. He's not here to condemn us. He is the best gift in the world. Now, where is Jesus at right now? At the right-hand side of the Father. The man 
Jesus is seated at the right hand side of the Father. He's a man up there right now. The man, Christ Jesus, is seated at the right hand side of the Father in his glorified body. And Jesus says to the Father, are you going to send the Holy Spirit to them in my place? And God the Father says, yes, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to the people that accept you as their Savior, and he will represent you, Jesus. Now, that's what the Bible says. Okay? Now, I know when you get into the Trinity, it can get fuzzy sometimes. Christ lives in our heart through the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I want to say that again. Christ lives in our heart through the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because where is Jesus at? Right hand side the Father in a glorified body, and he has sent the Holy Spirit to live in us. Okay? So, Sometimes we can get tongue-tied and all of that, but don't. Just accept the fact that God's Spirit, Christ's Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. <laughs> okay, that's the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, the God the Holy Ghost. There's only one God, and he manifests himself in three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. There ain't three gods, one God. But he manifests himself as the Father, as the Son, and as the Holy Ghost. All right. But what I'm trying to get us to see tonight, that we are so convinced that the Holy Spirit is for me. One hundred percent. And he'll never leave you. And he'll never forsake you. In Hebrews 13, it says three times. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. In fact, let's turn there right now. Because we want to accentuate something here tonight. We just don't want this to be another, another lesson. But we want this to, to, we walk out here, we want to know that, the Holy Spirit's with us. For the Bible says that we are now the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Look at the person next to you and tell them you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. The of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. That's right. So you better not touch God's anointed. I could preach a message on that. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, turn to Romans 8, 1 and 6. Romans 8. The Holy Spirit is also the spirit of life. Okay? The Bible says that the, the, the law of the spirit of life. Everybody say that. The law of the spirit of of life. God is life. Yes. The Holy Spirit is life. He's not death he, or death, <clears throat> but he's life. Bob, why are you doing all of that? Because I am puncture waiting this into your heart and mind that you will see that he is life. And anything comes to you that is death, don't have anything to do with it. Now listen to this. The law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Done. Finish. Complete. Amen. Don't have to beg for it. Don't have to jump up and down for it. You just say thank you, Jesus. Say I'm free. I'm free. From the law of sin and death. But how did you get free from the law of sin and death? Tell me. Jesus. Huh? Jesus. 
All right, the law of the spirit of life has set us free, which you could say Jesus, from that law of sin and death. Everybody knows what gravity is. If it wasn't for that, we'd be stuck to the ceiling up there. <laughs> you can't see gravity, but it power it works. We don't ever think about gravity, do we? When's the last time you thought about gravity? When? I thought about it today when I almost fell off that ladder. Oh, <laughs> yes. Hey, it's yes. pulling. Uh, uh, it's, it's pulling on you. Hey, that's a good one. The law of sin of death pulls on you. Gravity pulls on you. But I can tell you what. I know how you can overcome that gravity law by flight and lift. An airplane's going down that runway. Power and lift. Whew. And gravity's pulling, but it ain't doing no good. Because the law of the spirit of life is stronger than that gravity, which I am illustrating to you as the law of sin and death. It's done. It's complete. That's why Paul said, Sin shall not have dominion over us. What is all this thing working inside of me? You know what it is. It's the law of sin and death. That gravity trying to pull you down, which is the devil. But then you say, no, I'm set free. This is sort of a little strange illustration, but I like illustrations. I need a volunteer. Be brave, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. Be brave, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. Okay, that's enough. All right, come over here. You're outside, okay, and somebody attacks you. Oh, that's good. All right, the law of sin and death attacks you. What are you going to do? You're going to resist. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right, this, this law of sin and death is a real pretty woman. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Uh, you, you, why, why, why? You resist. Yes, sir. I'm resisting. Okay. Got you, didn't I? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's good enough. You got me. We're all grown ups in here. That is a big struggle for men. Right, men? Yes, sir. Yes. What if it was a bowl of ice cream? Some of y'all are married. <laughs> Some of you married men... You, we don't even see your lips move, but yours, I can see your eyes. Okay. Look, look at Missy, look at him. Stop looking at him, Missy. Have a little mercy on him. All right. <laughs> Listen, tell it like it is, and I've got to tell it like it is. I, I, I've had too many men cry on my shoulder. What do you do, Bob? Take hot showers, cold showers, <laughs> run around the block 25 times, and then start regulating yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. Trust the Holy Spirit that he'll give you grace upon grace upon grace and grace upon grace to overcome that temptation. Because temptation is not a sin. And if you put it down as a sin, then condemnation will eat you alive. The devil will put it on you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. In fact, the Bible says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. Doesn't say anything about women because they don't have no temptation. <laughs> All right, so where are we at? Okay, therefore, there is now no condemnation, no judging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ. Look at that verse of Scripture. Jesus, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remember I said Sunday, God, you think you're in this building, don't you? You 
You're not in this building. You're in Jesus. He put us all in Jesus. Safety in Jesus. Who, who lives and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. Now let me tell you something. We're still in these human bodies. Yes. Have you noticed that? Almost definitely. Just about every day. And it has its little... I better not go that way. <laughs> See, I'm thinking before I speak anymore. I'm trying there to... You go. <clears throat> yes, now notice... Look, look, therefore, there is now, everybody say now, right now, no condemnation, no judging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus. Condition, who lives and walk, not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. Now, the dictates of the flesh will be dictating to you. Now, my, and I don't mind telling you right now, I know we're going to have ice cream and cake, and I'll probably eat a little bit. I'll work at it. That's my weakness. People have birthdays, and I'm invited to them all. Rick, um, I won't be here Friday night because I'm invited to my own birthday party. Way over there and uh, uh, across the uh, ocean, I mean over the, uh, to John's Island at my daughter's house, I think they got a surprise for us because they're going to come and pick us up, make sure we are there. All right. So I'm like a lamb led to the slaughter. Amen. So y'all just keep on moving while you're here now. I mean, don't just... just don't worry about it. I'll be back, hopefully Sunday. All right. Now, say there's no condemnation now. Right, right now. See, I, we just got and said that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our help. I don't see anything in John where the Holy Spirit is the one that condemns us. Do you? See, when you read the scriptures, find out what ain't there. Hello, are you there? Find out what ain't there. Condemnation and guilt is not there in Christ. Christ, the Holy Spirit, is life. He's life. Life overcomes death. Life overcomes condemnation. So recognize the Holy Spirit as life. And in him there is that law of life that sets us free from the law of sin and death. All right, let's finish reading this. We've got to see it now. We've got to remember, we got somebody on our side. It's God. Say, God's on my side. From the very beginning, the Holy Spirit convicted the world of sin. That was us. He convicted us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But now he is our partner. We have partnered with him. He lives within us. He, he directs us and guides us and strengthens us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He gives us wisdom and truth and life. He's life. Yes, sir. Next verse. Let's move fast. Time goes by so fast. For the law of the spirit of life, 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 which is in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Yes. We are in Christ Jesus. What else is in Christ Jesus? Life. Yes. Woo! I don't see no death there. What are you talking about death? Death, death, we ain't no death. We in Christ. There's no death in Christ. He is life. 100% light. Life. We are in total, absolute life and light. And what has he done? He has set us free by law. Of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and of death. Now you've got to put that down. Now, oh goodness, what happened if I if I sin, Bob? Somebody tell me. First John. First John what? One nine. All right. Put first John one nine up there. Well, 
we're free, we're walking, and all of a sudden I lose my temper, which, you know, that's impossible almost for some of you, I know. But let's just say you do or you whatever. Put the King James up to make it short on that one. Here we go. If we confess our sins, who is faithful? God. Who is just? God. Who forgives us? God. And what does he forgive us from? Sins. And what else does he do? Cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, what unrighteousness do you have? And why are we thinking about the negative and get on the solution of what the Lord has done? From the very beginning, he, he came, and the Bible says Christ came to this earth to seek those that were lost. And we were all lost. The Holy Spirit came and convicted us of our sins, and we gave our life to Christ, and God put us in Christ. And in Christ, there is a law that works 24-7, and it's the law of life. The law of life when you're sleeping. The law of life is working, setting us free, totally free from the law of sin and death. And I said, if you did make a mistake, everybody say 1 John 1, 9. Now, I want you to back up to 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. <clears throat> Yeah, let's hit the, yeah, that's good. All right. King James. Keep it a little clear, clearer there. For if we walk in the light as he is in the light. All right. Now you're in Christ. Everybody say, I'm in Christ. In Christ. And in him there is light. In and I walk in that light. For God is, light. God is light. We have fellowship one with another. Very important to remember, that, remember now. <coughs> if we stop having fellowship... If you stop having fellowship with me and I, and, and I stop having fellowship with you, tell me what's wrong. Huh? One of us ain't walking in the light. You see that? One of us is not walking in the light. Now we've all experienced that. There's been times we did not walk in the light. And we didn't have fellowship with our husband, you know. We didn't have fellowship with our wife. She quit, you know, cooking things that I like, like possum stew and things like that. And I got <laughs> mad at her. And <coughs> but we didn't have no fellowship until I confessed. I said, honey, I'm sorry. I love you regardless of what you cook or don't cook. I love you for yourself. And we get right, now we got fellowship. What do you mean fellowship? We talk with one another. Your spirit is touching one another. Oh, man, it's wonderful. Is that not true? Yes, sir. When you can't touch somebody's spirit, what are you touching? Just flesh. Mm. But we can touch each other's spirit because that's where the Holy Spirit is. Yes, sir. Oh. So, oh, Lord, thank you. Now, notice this. We have, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Automatic, continuously, the uh, Amplified says continuously, cleanses us. So I walk in the light. But what happened if I didn't walk in the light? What, what would I do to get back into the light? First John 1, 9. First John 1, 9, that's right. But put 1, uh, 8 up there. All right. If we say that we have not no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. All right, what is John saying there? He's simply saying, listen, you're walking in the light as he is in the light. You have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. But then you sin. And but then you say, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't sin. <laughs> Come on now. How many have, uh, uh, we, something happened between mates? Remember, can you think of something like that? Huh? Oh, no, I, I, no, I did not, not me. I, 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 no, I'm perfect. I, I didn't sin. Well, now, if we didn't, look what it says. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So we're in deception. Are you listening? 
we are in deception until you or me say, yes, I did sin against my wife. I told her to shut up in front of the kids. And that ain't nice. You ever hear the frying pan? <laughs> Some of you can identify with that. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey, I didn't mean to do that. I know that's a little comical, but you get the point. So how are you going to get free from that sin? You've got you to say, I get out of that deception and say, yes, I'm holding grudges against you, and I'm sorry, and I confess to the Lord, and God is just and faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And now we're back in 1 John 1, 7, walking in the light and having fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. Let's cook some cookies and get some milk and have a good time here tonight. How many of you here plays checkers? Susan and me plays checkers sometime when we have time. That might be a good game for some of you to get out of the TV mold. Break some of the old molds that you're in, you know. And, and, and we got these big checkers, you know. And we play checkers and she lets me win every once in a while. <laughs> anyway. How many see the sequences? You got to see the sequences, and that's how you walk day by day. If you have sin, don't say you haven't sinned. Confess the sin to God, and if you have to make it right with one another, but you know that little pride. How many's ever had that little pride, and you just wait as long as you? Huh? Yeah, I love it. <clears throat> Boy, you and, and well, you're struggling inside. You know you need to say I'm sorry, and you're struggling. <laughs> Same thing with brothers and sisters in the Lord. Get it over with. Now, if the person don't accept that, when you ask them, would you forgive me? If they don't, you're clear. You're clear. You've confessed. And now you're clean. you back in the, in the light, even though you're not having fellowship with that brother or that sister, but it's on their part. It's not on your part. Right. So you're free. And your prayers will get answered, but theirs won't. Mm. How many got it? Good, very simple, ain't complicated. Now, the Holy Spirit has been given to us to help us. Okay? That's so important to understand. Now, let's get on back to, uh, let's go to another scripture. <coughs> Turn to Romans uh, 8. Romans 8, 18. We may start, start with 11. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. I want everybody, so you've got to identify with that. Here's what you've got to see. Not just read it, but you've got to agree with it. Agree with it. Yes, the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Everybody say, dwells in me. Dwells in me. Think about that. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He has power to raise the dead. And he dwells in me. And he dwells in you. Yes. Wow. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body right. by his spirit that dwells in you. Right. How many times I've been so weak physically and I would say, and Susan does say, Lord, I thank you that you are quickening my mortal body tonight by your spirit. Thank you, you're giving me life. Lord, I am, yes, I'm tired, but I thank you, you are a spirit of life. You are a spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life has set me free from this tiredness. You are my strengthener. You are my strengthener. You remember the scriptures? He's our strengthener. See, we have to understand, and you, we have not because we ask not. So you've got to know this word and appropriate the word by faith. Everything is by faith. Okay? Now, you've got to remember that. Who's going to quicken your mortal body? Notice, mortal body. Not immortal. Anybody in, in their mor immortal body right now? If you are, come up and pray for me. 
you still in these mortal bodies. And the Spirit of God will quicken these mortal bodies. I learned that years ago. That's why I'm 83 years old, or 38, or something like that. Anyway, all right, all right, all right. go to the next verse. Look at that. Mm. Next verse. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. The flesh is going to pull you this way. It's going to pull you that way. We all have to fight it. Nobody's any more spiritual than anybody else. We all have to fight the flesh, don't we? But we got to know that it was dealt with already. And so there again, your faith goes into operation. And you say what the scripture says, sin shall not have dominion over me. I don't have much trouble in none of those areas anymore. I didn't say that I couldn't uh, slip and sin in some area. As long as I'm, we in these bodies, that's a possibility. But I don't go around worrying about it. But I go around and blessing God, I'm on the resurrected side. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. He quickens me every morning. When I get up, it's like... Anybody like that in the morning time? Oh, it's daylight. <laughs> How many is hard to get up? Let's say it's hard to get up in the morning. Let me see your hands. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. The rest of you, I'm going to say it. All right. So in the morning, the first thing I get up, I say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Recognize Him with you. I need a volunteer. Volunteer. All right, all right, here's this young man here. He, there he is, okay, he represents the Holy Spirit. What am I doing? I might, reckon, I might recognize the Holy Spirit that's been given to me to help me, to comfort me, to empower me. I just ignore him. What's the I don't ever talk with him. Wouldn't that grieve you? Yes. Yes, sir. That's grieving the Holy Spirit. You, we don't even recognize him anymore. Yes, Come on, don't shout me down, church. I'm trying to be as... Let's, you, you can be seated, son. How many, uh, come on now, don't give me no religious lips now, come on. When's the last time you said good morning Holy Spirit? 20 years ago. How many love me? I'm pushing it, I know, but I'm, I, you know, we got to get back to recognize him. He's been given to us to see us through this whole world. He's been given to us to, to go through this little hour, uh, just a little hour of time that we have down here. We're not going to make it without him. We're not going to make it without him. He's the one that was so gracious to show us we were lost. We were separated from God. He convicted us of our sins. Now he wants to empower us. He wants to do a work in us and make us willing to serve the Lord. Amen. All right, come on. Now, I've got 20 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want you to turn to uh, Philippians 1.6. Uh, Philippians 1.6. Now, look at this. Being confident. Everybody, there's the, the, the message on confidence. Being confident of this very thing. Now, I ask the question, what very thing? Talk when you read the Bible. Ask questions. What very thing is he talking about? You see, it comes alive to you more. That he, who is he? Which has begun, that should be a capital H. He which has begun a good work in you. And when did he start the good work? The day that he convicted you that you were a sinner. He started it right there. Now notice this. Be confident of what? That the Holy Spirit started a good work in us. 
will perform it until you mess up. No, sir. And then you're a goner. No, sir. You're down the drain. It was good to know you, buddy. <laughs> down the drain you go. Here's another one going down the drain. Huh? What did he say? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Look what it says. Until the day of Jesus Christ when he comes back yes, and catches his church up Woo. and we'll be with him. Come on, church, shout me down and do something. Don't throw rocks at me. I'm sick of them. I am trying to get you to understand that God Almighty and His Spirit is in us wherever we go. Amen. You take a shower, He's in the shower with you. You're sitting on the throne, He's sitting on the throne with you. You be- <laughs> Y'all behave yourself out there. If you're baking a cake, He's baking a cake with you. You're driving the car. He's driving the car with you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. You can't get rid of him. He'll let me. Don't grieve him. Recognize him. Recognize him. Recognize him. That he's been given to us to help us and strengthen us and empower us. And to give us eternal life. Wow. Now. Being confident. Are you confident? Yes, sir. Is that just a word to you? Look at it. Come on. Well, I'm trying to make you confident tonight. See, I'm confident. Because I'm going to tell you how you will get more confident. Because as you begin to recognize him, you will begin to see, wow, I see the Lord working this morning. Gosh, I didn't. My, I see the Lord working over there. You will begin to see... Just, just in the services, how I see God working in people's lives, I just see the Spirit. Yes, sir. Not with these physical eyes, but my inner man senses when he's working with people. Mm-hmm. You'll be so aware. You will get your mind off the devil. You'll get your mind off your flesh. You'll get your mind off what John Doe said to you 25 years ago. You will... Be absolutely caught up in the spirit of God. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. Because you're conscious. Now, would you think for a moment? Mm-hmm. Good, Pastor. I know that's a big job for some of us. <laughs> you got a snake in your car. Oh, boy. Don't say that. Oh, why did I have to say that? Uh, Mrs. James, I'm so sorry. Now, if you're conscious of the snake in your car, how many is going to get in the car and crank it up and drive off? Huh? No. You ain't going to get near that car. No, 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 sir. Sorry. So you've got to be conscious of the Holy Spirit living in you. Because you're conscious of his power. You're conscious of his love. You're conscious of his, his, his presence. You're conscious of how much he loves you. You're conscious of, oh, he's forgiven me. I'm clean. There's no condemnation. I'm free at last. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has set me free. You see it. The Holy Spirit enlightens you. He enlightens you. You are free. Yeah, but I still got this pain back here in my back. Well, it's just going to have to adjust itself. I'm still free. Yes. Amen. Yes. Just because you got a pain in your foot don't mean you're not free. That's right. That's right. I got news for you. The older you get, you'll probably experience some pains in some areas you never experienced it before. Amen. Anybody can testify to that. (laughs) But listen, your name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't care if you're dragging your foot. Your name is still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God still loves me. God lives in me. He's for me. He'll never leave me. Hallelujah. Wow. Woo, 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 woo. I believe I'm healed. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Now, I was healed before I, that happened. But see, you've got to be conscious of what the Lord has done. Amen. All this other junk is junk. But don't mess with my tractor. That's 
<laughs> and I'm not saying we should get rid of it all, and I appreciate it all. You know what I'm talking about. But when, it, when you compare it to eternal life, it is. Paul said it something like, What? Dunk. 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 <laughs> you say you're not in church? Dunk. What is dunk? <laughs> Let's don't go no further, okay? <clears throat> you know what dunk is. How can he say that? Because he saw the glory. Amen. When you see the glory, everything is dunk. Everything we thought was so great is dunk and more dunk. It's dunk on dunk. Yes, sir. That's right. Because you see the glory. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I got 15 more minutes. Okay, we're going to get through this yet. Yeah. All right. Now, <laughs> I'll give you another scripture. Now, do you have the confidence? Yes, sir. Of, the, of what? Of this very thing. What is this very thing? Word. That he which has begun a what? A good work in you? Well, what? Perform it? How long? Until the day of Jesus Christ. Don't give up on him because he's not giving up on you. Amen? All right. Let's go to another verse. Go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. King James. I mean, uh, amplified on that one. Look at this now. Remember, we're, I'm trying to impart to us tonight the precious person of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And we had a little example about anor just ignoring him and paying no attention to him. And now God is bringing us back to focus on we're going to get more attention to him. We're going to talk to the Holy Spirit. I don't see anywhere in the scriptures, correct me if I'm wrong, it's fine, we'll change it. That we pray to the Holy Spirit, what well, we can talk to the Holy Spirit, okay? All right? We pray to the Father in, through Jesus, in Jesus' name, and we talk to the Holy Spirit and we ask him to strengthen me, help me. So check it out. If I'm wrong, then we'll correct it. Very simple, not complicated. Now, we also especially thank God what for? Continuously for this. This? This what? what th this? That when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God. Anytime this word is, is, is read, we should have the greatest respect in the world for this word. This word is the word of the living God. <clears throat> and in this word, when you read the logos, that's the logos, and you read that logos, it can turn into rhema. And when it turns into rhema, it turns into life, revelation. You see, it, it, that's why I can shout. <laughs> You understand that? See, when it comes alive to you, <clears throat> let's put it this way. You just inherited a billion dollars. Now, he hears that, yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. And here's the check. Now, watch him jump all over the place. Amen. Now, it, now it's alive. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. I got a million dollars. But before it was just, well, yeah, I, got, I inherited a billion dollars, yeah. Yeah, that's a million dollars. It's worth more than a million, really. <clears throat> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? When you got the hand, when you got the that that money in your hand, woo! <laughs> it's live. And you go down and you start buying hamburgers and hot dogs and whatever you like. You know, you might like some bacon. I don't know, but any, <laughs> and you start doing. Man, you're alive. It it ain't no promise anymore. It's reality. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, I, I don't know where you're at. You have to share with me sometimes how it comes alive to you. But anyway, that's the way it does me. I, I've read verses hundreds of times and then, <laughs> wow, 
Man, it just, it fills my inner man. It generalizes my outer man. Uh, my brain is like, wow. I mean, woo. Quiet in here. That message that our brother preaches, that thing's alive to him. Yes. You see him jumping around up here? He's running over here under the canopy. I got another thing to tell you about right. Man, he's, you know, that's life. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. He's drinking it. It's setting him free. How much are we missing? But that's why when you get in contact with the Holy Spirit and you recognize what he does, has done for you, and what he wants to do is make us alive in Jesus, you come into a new life, an empowering life. Even your mortal body, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, is quickening your mortal body. You realize I'm 83 years old and I'm just a jumping and a jiving inside and I'm just a little bit on the outside, but inside I'm a jumping and a jiving, a jiving and a jumping. Now when I go home, let me tell you something, it'll, it'll comes down. You can't live like this 24-7, but you don't let it go way down. It goes down where you can handle your everyday life. Can you imagine going up to the, the guy in the bank and say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, it's good to see you. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> and the policeman comes in <laughs> and out you go. And out you go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now look at this. Got to look at this now. Which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is effectively at work in you. That's how important this word is. Get the word of God in your mind. Memorize these scriptures. It works it works effectively at work in you who believe. Exercising, listen to this, exercising its superhuman power in those a heap to trust and rely on it. Yes. Come on, church, shout me down to do something. Amen. Let the light shine in tonight. Yes, you know, I've often wondered this. I've seen people that could sing songs and memorize songs and they can't remember one scripture. I've often, often wondered about this. This one woman, I remember, she could say everything. Talk, 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 talk. And I've seen men like that too. Talk, 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 talk. Call me a scripture. They can't. I don't understand that. And I can't even talk it. I can quote scriptures. Because I meditate on it. Not that I'm the greatest, but I'm telling you, I meditate on it. I live. This thing is open. You can tell me. That thing is always open on my table when you come in. You ain't never seen that Bible that ain't open when it comes to my house. Because I'm chewing on the word. Look at that Bible. You can tell I've been chewing on it. <laughs> now the point of this message tonight is become more, a consci more conscious of the Holy Spirit. How would your kids feel that you never talk to your kids? That's what's wrong with a lot of folks. They never pay no attention to the kids. They're always barking at them or fussing at them. When I wake up this morning, the first thing I do, and I say, we're going to quit. So I got I smell that ice cream back there now. <laughs> and a little cake on their side. <laughs> yeah, I smile. Be right back there. <laughs> I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Amen, sir. Then I come in there, Susan's got my coffee cooking. My banana cut, my grapes. And I say to my bride, after 60 some years, I think it's 62 or one, I forgot. <laughs> Don't tell her I forgot, please. Oh my goodness, I said, said that. I say, good morning, honey, how are you? And she'd say, good morning, precious one, how are you? And we just like two little hummingbirds in our nest. Yeah, 
62 years of marriage. Yes, sir. I'm buzzing around here like I'm like a bee. I just uh, go around my honey like that. Amen. I'm, I'll, I'll go to that little, you know, that little bird that has that long. I'm, look, I'm just, like, looking for that honey there. Y'all yeah, yeah. yeah, don't do that. Huh? Well, now you know when you get married again, you, you, you know. Man, it's wonderful. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, she can get married again. She'll get married again. That's right. Sure. That's right. And this time, hallelujah. You're going to remember everything I said. You lost your wife two, two weeks ago? Yes, sir. You missed that, don't you? You missed it. Yes, I do. Christian friends that have helped me out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you change anything if you had it all over to go over again? No, sir. So you feel like you're really yes. right in line. Well, that's yes. good. You have no regrets. No, I have no regrets. That's wonderful. You looking for somebody else now? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Not right now. Don't lie to this man now. No, sir. Huh? No, sir. You're not looking, not yet. Yeah, yeah. About two more weeks, you'll be looking. <laughs> Down the road as the Lord leads. Okay. There you go, as the Lord leads. All right. What are we going to get more conscious this week of? Tell me. Huh? The Holy Spirit. Is the Word powerful? Get the Word in you. Get it off the pages. Get it in you. Memorize the Scripture. Next. Yeah, I'll be here. Well, I'll be here. I don't know if I'll be here next Wednesday night because I'll get my nose worked on. Y'all going to be so proud of me. I'm going to have a new nose. Yeah. Hey, Bob, you look pretty before, but you look great now. Yeah.